Hello, my name is Carol Kivler, and I'm here to talk to you about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, clinical depression. But more importantly, to put a face of hope on depression. 20 years ago, I was diagnosed with my first clinical depression and anxiety disorder. And I remember asking myself, why me? After doing some research and finding how prevalent clinical depression is, the question changed to, why not me? According to the American Psychiatric Association, 14.6 million Americans per year struggle with a clinical depression. And more startling is that only one third of them seek treatment. Depression is a debilitating disease. When you look at brain scans or MRIs of people with depression, there's a lot of dark areas in their brain. Compared to if you take an MRI of someone without depression, there's a lot of light in there, which leads us to believe that not only is clinical depression an emotional illness, it's a physical illness as well. So what is depression? It's not an attitude, it's not a character flaw, it's not laziness, it's not a bump in the road, and above all, it's not contagious. It's a real illness with real treatment. Today in 2011, there's hope hope that it's more a probability than a possibility that you will recover with treatment from clinical depression. When I look back over my 20 years with depression and four bouts of, of psychosis, I recognize that each time I've come back from depression, I come back even stronger. And I've learned to live in recovery for longer periods of time. And how I've done that is to make sustainable lifestyle changes that can keep me in recovery. And I would recommend them to anyone listening. The American Psychiatric Association came out with their guidelines on treating depression for the first time in 10 years, just this past July. And the first thing that they talked heavily about was exercise and the importance of exercise and the reason why exercise is so valuable with people that struggle with clinical depression. They also said that the first line of treatment is to seek medical help in obtaining both medication and talk therapy. They felt that if medication and talk therapy did not give you results, that their next line of defense was something called electroconvulsive therapy, or ECT. They also talked about the importance of sleep and the importance of a good nutritious diet because of the medication weight gain um, side effects. I also believe that support groups are necessary and above all, acceptance of an illness that you might deal with for the rest of your life. In the hospital, they taught me about journaling and how important it is to get out of your head and get it on paper. And above all, I look at prayer and meditation as part of my wellness plan. For me, when I, was, when I am at the lowest point of the depression, uh, prayer takes on a very, uh, very special place. What happens to me in the hospital is that when uh, any kind of a religious setting is, uh, is um, presented to me, I, I want to be there. Whether it's a rabbi coming in for services, whether it's a priest coming in for mass, whether it's a minister coming in for services. Because for me, when I'm in a religious setting, the anxiety and the depression for some reason arrests itself for a short period of time. If you know someone in your circle of influence, whether it be a family member, a loved one, or a, a friend, I would encourage you to help them seek treatment. But most importantly, I would encourage you to be supportive when they go through with this challenging illness. Because today, there is hope, even if you struggle from depression. Thanks for listening.